Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to handle a data type mismatch error in Microsoft Access. Well, first, let's talk about what a data type mismatch error is. And in order to do that, we have to know what a data type is. So a data type is the kind of data that each field in your table stores. Text, number, currency, yes, no, that kind of stuff. That's a data type, okay? So short text is a lot different internally than a number is, for example. And if you don't know about these different data types, go watch my free Access Beginner 1 class. There it is. You'll find a link down below you can click on. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. It's four hours long, absolutely free. Teaches you all about data types in Microsoft Access. Now, what's a data type mismatch? Well, that's when you do something. And there's a bunch of different somethings. We're going to talk about all of them in a few minutes. You try to do something involving two different data types. For example, you can see here, I've got customer T, right? The customer table. I'm trying to join the customer ID with a description field in the contact table. Now, customer ID is an auto number, my primary key. It's a number, right? Long integer. Whereas description is a short text field. All right, try to join those things together, run a query, you get an error message. All right, so that's a data type mismatch. Okay, so let's see some different data type mismatch. I'm going to show you some of the popular ones that come up that people ask me about all the time. Here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy at my website if you want to. You find a link down below. You can use any database that you want. Let's start with the easy stuff. Let's go to table design. Let's go to customer table, go to design view. Now, it used to be in the old days, in the old versions of Access, when I was a wee lad, right? If you had like a number data type here, okay? And you put a default value in here that was a text string, like inside of quotes, right? Quote one quote like that, all right? Access used to yell at you, but it lets you do that now, which I don't really like. And if you come in here, and you try to add a new record now, come down here to the bottom, right? It'll actually convert that for you over to a one. All right, that's okay. But I wish Access would yell at you at this point here and say, no, that's not allowed. However, you will find, especially people who are used to Excel will do this all the time. They'll go NA, right, in here. And now if you try to save that, it's gonna yell at you. Type mismatch in the default value because Access can't convert NA over to a number. All right, remember, text values go inside of quotes, right? Numbers don't. And dates usually have to go inside of pound signs, right? Little hashtags, okay? So this over here should be just a number, like one. All right, you can also run into the same kind of problems if you do the things in currency values or date time values that are of the wrong data type, okay? Let's go over to queries now. By far, the number one reason why people have a data type mismatch is because they use query criteria wrong. So let's create a query. Create query design. We're just going to base a query off of one table. All right, my customer table. Now, if you don't know what query criteria are, go watch this video. Again, free video. Go watch it right now and come on back. Okay, so if I got the customers, let's say I bring in the customer ID, the first name, and then I bring in a number field. All right, lowers my number field. Uh, we got family sizes, a number field. Okay, if I come down here and just put in a one by itself, that's what I'm expecting. If you put in one inside of quotes like that and run it, you get the data type mismatch because it's supposed to be just a one without the quotes, right? Remember quotes equals string. Uh, family size is a number value. Another big one people get is they put a dollar sign for the criteria for a currency value, like here, credit limit, okay? You want the credit limit less than $1,000, okay? That's acceptable. But what a lot of people do, especially beginners, is they'll put the dollar sign there, okay? And then when you run it, it says data type mismatch, and people are like, what? Why? It's, eh, it's a dollar sign. No, what happens is access throws quotes around that. See, I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see it, shift F2, see? You put that dollar sign in there, Access throws those quotes around it. Again, another thing I don't particularly care for, but that's what Access does. And this is one that I get emailed about all the time. Another big one, date fields. 
and it looks like this. We got a date, uh, customer census date, okay? Here it is right here. I'm going to zoom in again so you can see it, okay? If you want less than, let's say, January 1st, 2000, all right? A lot of people put those inside as single quotes, especially SQL server users, because an SQL server, that's the valid syntax, right? You'd say where, you know, my date is less than, and then that, you put dates inside of single quotes, but you don't do that in access. So if you put less than 112000 like that, and then try to run it, you get a data type, data, 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 <laughs> that thing, the data type mismatch in criteria expression. Why? Because access wants dates inside of these guys. Hashtags or pound symbols or octothorps. They got lots of different names. Tic-tac-toe boxes, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and that will give you the valid date. There you go. And yes, I'm using ISO dates on my system, so Access flips it around for me. Another issue you can get with queries is when you run an append query and you try to append data that you've maybe imported from Excel into a temporary table, and then you want to append it into your main table, you get what's called a type conversion failure. It's basically the same thing as a data type mismatch. I talk about that in more detail in this video when I talk about append query mistakes. That's number two. And again, you'll find links to all this stuff down below in the notes. Okay, so that's pretty much most of the issues with a single table query. Let's take a look at using a query with multiple tables. Now, to do this, you have to understand relationships. Now, if you don't know relationships, go watch this video. I got lots and lots of stuff about relationships. Go start with this one. If you don't know how to relate two tables together, go watch this. Now, I want to show you. Let's close this guy. Save changes. No, I want to show you a mistake I see all the time. People do this all the time. All right, so here's my customer ID. Okay. Customer ID right there, auto number, long integer, right? As we know, auto numbers are long integers, okay? Now, you want to make a related table for this customer. Let's say you want to make a pet table to store this person's pets. All right, you're a vet clinic. Let's go create table design, okay? You've got the pet ID. You make that the auto number, no problem. Then you got the pet name, okay, short text. Then you got to relate it back to the customer, right? So you put in the customer ID, but you leave it as short text accidentally because that's the default. A lot of people do that. Then they continue on, you know, with the favorite toy. What? I can't type today. Favorite toy. Right? All that kind of stuff. And then training information. Blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is people do this all the time. They accidentally leave that as short text. Let's continue with this mistake. Save this as my pet T, my pet table. Okay? Everything's fine. It's defined. Whatever. Good to go. Pet name you put in here, Max. All right, customer one. Everything looks good so far. Favorite toy is a chew, whatever. All right, then we got uh, we got Carter. Okay, customer two. And his favorite toy is a rope. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so everything looks great. Looks fine. You can even build forms around this. No problem. All right. Now, you go to make a query. Create query design. And you bring in your customer table and your pet table. Now, the first thing you should notice here is that Access didn't automatically make that join for you. If it sees that you got customer ID here, customer ID here, and the data types are the same, it will automatically make that ad hoc relationship, it's called. Ad hoc meaning like right now in, in, in the situation. All right, it's not a permanent uh, uh, database relationship. All right, it's just right now between the query. I actually use these a lot. I very seldomly use the actual relationships window because when you split your database into multiple backend tables, you lose that ability. So I don't usually rely on it. But still, you can force this relationship by clicking and dragging and dropping. Okay, no problem, no errors yet. Bring in the customer ID, first name, and bring in the pet's name and his favorite toy. Right, run it, bam, there you go. Data type mismatch and expression, and now, you fire off the email to me, or you post it in the forums, or you put it, I, you put it, you put it in the comments, and you say, it's not working, and that's it. <laughs> give me details, people. When you're going to post a problem, give me details. Tell me what you did. Tell me what the exact error message is that you're getting, right? And then I can help you better, all right? But that's why I make these videos. So now you can hopefully see that that's what causes the type mismatch. Type mismatch means that that is somehow mixed to that, and it's wrong. And compound this with... Maybe you've got something down here with a bad criteria, like a date in here, and you've got query criteria on that. 
if you have problems like this, try to peel them back in, in stages like an onion, right? O ogres, they have, they have layers like onions. So, you know, try taking a criteria off. Try moving one field at a time. See what, you know, see if you can figure out what the problem is. Okay? But we know what the problem is. The problem is, is that this does not match this. Now, let's close this. Here's the, here's the sinister thing, too. If you go to the database relationships window, and you try to make that relationship here, right? Add tables, customer, pets, right? Make that relationship, customer ID to customer ID. Hit create, save it. Access lets you do that. It shouldn't. <laughs> I wish it didn't. It should throw up at least a warning here. Hey, Microsoft guys, put a warning there. So the data taps don't data types don't match. You get I get I get tons of emails from people all the time saying why isn't this working? Why is this not working? Yeah, they say it the other way too, but they spell it right. <laughs> all right, we're not gonna save this relationship because it's not right. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Close that. Yeah, I don't usually. I don't usually rely on global relationships or much, unless I want to enforce something like cascade deletes. That's a subject for a whole different uh, video altogether. But how do we fix the problem? Come into your pet T, design view, change your customer ID. First of all, I like to have all of my IDs up top. That's just a matter of style. And then we're going to change this to a number of type long integer. Okay, save it. It says some data may be lost. Now, Access does a pretty good job of converting over those text values to number values as long as it can, right? If you got NA in one of them, it's not gonna. Do you want to continue anyway? Say yes, and let's take a peek, and it was able to save everybody. And now notice, here's another giveaway. Numbers always line up to the right side of the, let's call it cell. <laughs> I know it's a cell in Excel, right? This is a particular field and a, and a record in Access, whereas in Excel, it's a column and a row. All right, so let's let's call this a cell. Um, notice how that's lined up to the right before it was lined up on the left, right? Like these guys, that indicates text. Okay, so that's most. I'm going to say that's about ninety percent of the emails I get for for data type mismatches in Access and the development part of Access itself. VBA's got its own couple little tricky parts. So for you more advanced users in VBA, go to build event here. Okay. Um, if you do something like this, let's say you dim, um, let you dim L as a long, and then you say, uh, L equals Rick like that. Okay. Save it, compile it even debug compile. It compiles. There's nothing syntactically wrong with that. So it will compile. But then when you go to run it, boom, error 13 type mismatch. All right debug that means you're trying to assign a string value into a uh, a long integer now if you were to have here 123 and then let's message box l plus five okay save it run that and it works because uh, access vba does something called type casting no it's not type casting it's not the reason why captain kirk couldn't get any other roles after he left star Trek. i mean he got tj hooker but that's not and anyways, anyways, not that kind of not that kind of typecasting. Typecasting is when access takes one data type and stores it in a different data type. Like you can store a string that is itself numeric into a number field or a number variable. You can allow access to do it automatically or in access expert 26. I cover all the type conversion functions. For example, if you want to convert to a double you use CDBL, if you want to convert to a Long integer, you use CLNG, those kind of things. I'll put a link to Access Expert 26 down below in the link section. This also works kind of with dates as long as you give it a value that it understands. So, for example, if you go D as a date, all right, and you say D equals, let's say, 10, 23, 72, like that, and then message box D, let's say D plus 2, all right, two days after that date. All right, save it, run it, and it worked because it was able to typecast that into a valid date. Interestingly enough, if you were to flip this, right, if you do like 2310, since that's a valid date format in like Europe, for example, it, it'll still work, which is kind of weird. But if you do something out of the ordinary, like you try doing uh, 1980, 10, 23 like that, okay, it just gives you a type mismatch because it has no idea what you're talking about. 
So as long as it's a valid date format, Access will type it over to you. And in fact, I was getting ready to put together a video on this too. I love my, my ISO date standard, but if you try doing this uh, like that, Access has a cow with it and flips it back over. I don't like that. I want my code to read with the ISO standard. So if you come in here and do this like that, it'll stay put like that in your code. So if you're, if you're using the ISO date standard, you can get away with that as a string and then access type converts that to a date where you can keep the ISO date standard in your code if that's how you want it to read. Because if you're, if you're sharing your database with people around the world, they want to know, you know, have a standard date format. Just be careful because every now and then, and I haven't figured out why and when, it pops a little hashtag in the end there, which causes an error. So just keep that in mind. So there. There you go. That's how you handle your type mismatch errors. That's most of them. I'm sure there's some other circumstances that come up. If you have a type mismatch error that I haven't seen before, I'd be surprised, first of all. But post it in the comments down below. Let me know what you're getting. Let me know what you did. And I'll see if I can help you with it. And, uh, yeah, that's all for today. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.